415 US dollars. It's a lot for this watch. But fortunately, Seiko produced over 15,000 of this limited edition. And now that the original excitement is starting to come down, so is the price. So the question here is, is 330 US dollars the tipping point of when you might want to consider this 55th anniversary edition of the Seiko 5. Now I found this new on eBay for $330 and for that price, I was all in. But we all know that buying on eBay can be hit or miss and price should never be your only factor. After all, you do not want to send your hard earned money to someone and then never hear from them again. Three factors I always consider in buying on eBay. One, low price. Because like you guys, I'm buying this with my own money. Two, I always check the ratings and reviews about the seller. And three, I ask, are they an authorized dealer? Now, I purchased this watch from Thompson's Jewelry because they checked all those boxes. Plus, they are a small mom and pop shop with over 50 years experience. You know, they even included this hand signed card in the box. Now I did get a small discount on this watch, but that of course in no way affects my review. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to Thompson's listing on eBay. I recommend you check out their online store for yourself. And with that said, let's get started with this two week review. The case construction is stainless steel with a diameter coming in at 39 and a half millimeters, a lug to lug distance of 43 millimeters and an overall thickness of just a shade under 13. Now this is very possibly the shortest lug to lug distance of any watch I've ever worn. At 43 millimeter lug to lug, this should be wearable by everyone. For reference, here it is on my seven inch wrist. The shape of this case is unique in the Seiko 5 lineup and is currently only used on this specific model. It is one of the things helping this watch stand apart. The aesthetics are a direct throwback to the Seiko 5s of the 1960s, with this watch referencing a model Seiko produced back in June of 1968. This watch is a limited edition, albeit a very large limited edition of 15,555 watches. For finishing, we have a brushed radio finish on the top of the case with a high polish finish on the sides, as well as on the curved end section where it meets up with the bracelet. Now the benefit of this, of course, is it keeps the two different directions of brushing separated from one another. All of the edges here are nicely finished off and there are no sharp edges anywhere to be found. On side of the case, we see the added benefit of drilled lugs. Personally, I love this as the 20 millimeter lug width will provide numerous strap options. The crown at the four o'clock position is inset and I've heard some people complain that it can be difficult to pull out. Now in my everyday use, I pulled it out once, set the time and never thought about it again. I had no difficulty with the crown at all. For anyone who wears this as a daily driver, I suspect they'll have a similar experience. Personally, I think having to pull out an inset crown is more than a fair trade-off to keep the vintage vibe of this watch. For the finishing, I'm going to score this as a plus. So here we are on day one and I just adjusted the bracelet to fit. Now online, I have heard some people say that the links can be very difficult to remove and yeah, I get it now. Those push pins are in the snug. Now I use my standard link remover tool like this and that usually pushes the pins out maybe three quarters of the way and from there I can grab onto the pin and usually pull it out the rest of the way but like I said those pins are in the snug so I ended up using this tool to push the pin all the way out now for me adjusting the bracelet was not a big deal but I can see that, you know, if you're in the mindset of only using a link remover tool like this, it could be a challenge. The metal bracelet that comes with this watch is 20 millimeters at the lugs and tapers down to 18 millimeters at the sign clasp. Now on the plus side, the brushing is nicely done. We have solid links and solid end links. And I love the fact that Seiko kept the vintage vibe going on with the overall style of the bracelet. 
This bracelet is unique to this model and is not currently an option on any of the other watches in the Seiko 5 lineup. The double push button release clasp has two micro adjustments and granted, it doesn't sound like a lot at first. But to be fair, when you look at the size of the individual links, those two adjustment holes span the entire distance of one link. So, you know, in the end, I'm fine with it. Now, let's get on to the cons about the bracelet. So I've been wearing this watch for a couple of days now, and while I really like the look of this bracelet, it's not the most comfortable. It doesn't have a lot of articulation, and it definitely is on the stiff side. Now, how stiff is it? This is the only watch I've ever photographed, which I don't need to have a stand or something underneath it to prop it up. Yesterday, something interesting happened. Now, during my day, you know, I got busy with work, and then in the evening, I went out to the casino, and when I finally got home and I took this watch off, I realized I never once thought about the bracelet. And here is my takeaway from that experience. Yes, the bracelet is on the stiff side, and if I'm constantly thinking about it and I'm looking at it, I'm aware it's not as comfortable as other bracelets I own, but, if I just go about my day and I stop obsessing about my latest watch, turns out I don't think twice about it. Now granted, when you have a new watch, not obsessing about it is easier said than done. On one hand, I love the aesthetics of the bracelet and how it works with that 1960s style. But you know, at the same time, it could have been more comfortable. And the fact that the scissor section, you know that it's pressed, well, that's another letdown. Now the saving grace here is the fact that the lug width is a standard 20 millimeters. And that means if you decide to, finding a different bracelet should be an easy task. For the supplied meta bracelet, I am gonna score it as neutral. Now another factor in helping this watch to feel special is on the case back. Not only does it say limited edition, but each watch is individually numbered. Now I'm sure you've noticed I still have the protective sticker on mine and I admit it, I am still totally obsessing over my latest watch. Maybe I'll take it off, I don't know, maybe, maybe in a week or two, we'll see, I don't know. Inside that case, we have Seiko's 4R36 movement. 36, not 35, as this includes a day-date complication. That movement has 24 joules, 21,600 vibrations per hour, a 41-hour power reserve, it does hack, and it does hand wind. I have worn my watch every day for two weeks, and mine is running about three seconds slow per day. Now take that for what you will. Of course, your mileage may vary. For the movement, I'm gonna score it as a plus. Now I've heard some people say the Seiko movements are not exciting, and I don't know what that means. In an affordable watch, I don't want an exciting movement. I want a dependable one. And this movement is an affordable, reliable movement that hand winds and keeps good time. Moving on to the face of the watch. This watch is essentially the recreation of a watch that Seiko produced back in June of 1968. And that includes using the original Seiko 5 logo at the top of the dial and the words sports in blue at the bottom. The day date window here is surrounded with a metallic treatment, which was typically found on watches of that era. The bezel is a bi-directional bezel, not unidirectional as you typically found on watches with a rotating bezel. So after wearing this watch for about a week and a half, I'm actually surprised to learn that I prefer a bi-directional bezel. Yeah, it doesn't make that satisfying clicking noise when you rotate it, but practically every time I've timed something this week, it has been for less than 20 minutes. Cooking food, training a puppy, keeping track of the 15 minute intermission at bingo. Yes, I play bingo, please don't judge me. So being able to rotate the bezel in both directions has definitely been a plus. You know, during my testing, I never once bumped the bezel and accidentally moved it. 
That was one of my concerns about a bidirectional bezel before I got this watch. The watch face and bezel both have a stark black and white color theme aiding in its legibility. The raised rectangle shaped indices not only create a sense of depth, but they also mimic the rectangle shape of the links in the bracelet. And that helps to give the watch a nice unified feel overall. Now both the minute hand and the running second hand extend all the way into the white printed track to aid in accurately telling the time. Lastly, the day date window here is unapologetic. It makes no attempt to blend into the dial. It's large enough to easily be seen even in low light conditions. On top of the dial, we have a curved hardlex crystal, which of course, is harder than mineral crystal, but not as hard as sapphire. I am not aware of what crystal was used on the original watch back in 1968, but I think Seiko did not introduce their hard lux until 1970. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. So it's not as if Seiko used hard lux here to be true to the original. Now personally, on a watch that is meant to commemorate the 55th anniversary, I would have preferred to see a sapphire crystal here. Some plus, some minus, therefore I'm going to score this category as neutral. The loom on a hands, indices, and bezel is Seiko's own Lumabrite. So I'm sure it comes as absolutely no surprise to anyone, the loom here is top notch. Now the way that I test loom is I wear the watch, get an average amount of light exposed to it, set it alongside my bedside table at night, and to see if I can tell the time at four in the morning when my eyes are fully dilated. This watch easily passed my 4 a.m. loom test. For the loom category, I'm gonna score this as a plus. So I thought, why not try this on some different straps? You know, just for kicks. I was not expecting to learn anything from putting this on different straps. But it turns out, I did. So let's start there. Now I was going to put this on what I consider to be the quintessential strap for a dive style watch. But even though this is 20 millimeters, it just doesn't fit. And that's because it is just too thick. It doesn't fit in between the spring bars and the case. So what I learned here is that not every 20 millimeter strap is going to work for this watch. You would not, for instance, be able to get this on a double pass NATO. I did, however, manage to put this on a single pass French NATO strap. And I do love the way that this white thin pinstripe plays with that black and white dial. But I definitely would recommend assuming you're going to need a two piece thin strap for this watch. Now, I also thought it looked nice on a simple black leather strap, and that is until I tried it on with this racing strap. I think this looks even better and I love the way that it keeps that vintage vibe going. And then finally, I tried it on a beads of rice bracelet. And I think the shape of the indices and the bracelet just somehow makes this work. It's been over two weeks that I've been wearing this watch and my final score here is four out of five. Now, I'm sure there'll be some people quick to point out that there are other watches out there with better specs for less money. And yeah, that's true. Personally, I don't think every watch needs to have the best specs possible. I believe a watch is more than just about specs. In my opinion, I think the most important thing is something that is unquantifiable, something that's going to be different for each one of us. And that is how does it make you feel when it is on your wrist? Watch collecting is as much about the individual as it is about the watch. And that is why I always say buy whatever it is that you love. In the end, your opinion is the only one that matters because it is your watch collection. Thanks for watching everyone. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. I'll see you next time.